Hey, what's going on guys? Derek here. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about a huge, huge left-hand mistake that I see too many bass players make. Here we go. So first of all, the mistake that I'm talking about is the uncontrollable seesawing of the fingers. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you ever seen somebody play... All right, so that's what I'm talking about, the, the, the uncontrollable flying of the fingers. So two things, that can definitely hinder your speed and your accuracy, all right, only because your fingers are so far away from the fret. When it comes time to hit that downbeat or hit that note, you're so far away, that takes away the time that you have to get to that note. It might seem like a microscopic length of time, but trust me, it makes a difference. I mean, and then two, it just looks kind of crazy. It looks kind of weird. All right. So we want to control that. We, we want to be able to take that back. All right. It's really a mind thing because when you first get started playing, uh, you're pressing down the strings, right? You're pressing down whatever fret you're using the thumb behind the, fr uh, behind the neck. Uh, you're using your thumb as an anchor to press the string down. So therefore you think you need more and more weight on that one finger or on whatever finger that you're using. So the effect is the rest of your hand comes up to compensate for that. So we have to press down so hard that our fingers come up, but we have to get away from that. So making sure your fingers are closer to the fret with the same amount of force, with the same amount of tension that you can use to press the string down so you don't have to have that seesaw thing going on. All right, so one of the exercises that I like to do to get rid of that, I see that a lot in a lot of beginner players because, you know, they're first starting off playing, their hand might not be strong enough, so they think they have to do that, that seesaw thing to be able to, you know, make the string come down or press the string firmly enough. So one exercise I like to do that is just a chromatic exercise, like a walking bass line, like, like the bass line that I was just playing. I like to use that as an exercise just to be conscious about it. And you want to play this really slow and really be aware of where your fingers are. If you see your fingers start lifting up like that, you have to, it's a mind thing. You have to bring them back. You have to slow it down. You have to start over whatever you have to do to make sure that habit is completely gone. So one of the exercises that I like to do is just a chromatic exercise, like a walking baseline type of exercise. So I'm going to start on the A flat and just do one, two, three, four. All right. Just very simple. And I'm going to walk down the strings the same exact way. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right. And then obviously you have to pick your 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 fourth finger up just a little bit only because that's the last note that's being played. All right. So and then you can actually keep your fingers down. You can keep your first finger down and the rest of your fingers down when you play that fret. So that's the thing about it. The fingers are not going to keeping that first finger down, the index finger down is not going to affect this note. It actually helps it to press it down firmly. All right. So all of my fingers are being pressed down right now. So that's the, that's the simple thing, but that's how you can look at it at the same time, just playing it slow, just knowing that your other fingers are not going to affect the note afterwards. That only works going in this direction, going up the neck, going up the scale, all right? So next string, very simple exercise. Now I want to, uh, we're going to modulate, but we're going to work it back down chromatically, all right, in reverse. All right, so we're going to go to the E flat and then work it back down. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. All right, so let's do it again. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Make sure you're not doing that. <laughs> So my fingers are fairly closer to the fret and not flying out here. All right, so you just want to maintain that. You really want to practice that and focus in on it. All right, so that's one exercise I like to do. Another exercise I like to do is using the same concept, using those same four notes, that same four note pattern. All right, but we're going to be changing the fingering around. All right, so we're going to do uh, two, one, three, two, four, three. Okay, so two, one, three, two, four, three. All right, so now mixing up these notes, mixing up these fingerings definitely keeps you aware of what your fingers are doing because now you have to concentrate, <laughs> concentrate on the fingering that you have to do. All right, so same thing, we're we'll gonna be moving it down the string as well. So two, one, what did I say? <laughs> two, one, three, two, four, three. That's hard to say. And it actually helps if you say it along with it as well. That's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty good challenge for you to do. So two, one, three, two, four, three. I have it somewhere on the screen. Uh, so you can go along and follow along with it. So next string down, two, one, three, two, four, three. Uh, two, one, three, two, four, three. That's hard to say, man. 
<laughs> two, one, three, two, four, three. All right, we're going to be working it the same way. Uh, we're going to modulate and work it back down backwards. Uh, I just want to make sure I was playing it right. <laughs> Excuse me. So on the way back down, I'm playing three, four, two, three, one, two. All right. Three, four, two, three, one, two. That really makes you concentrate on what your fingers are doing. All right, so going up chromatically, doing the same thing. Two, one, three, two, four, three. Two, one, three, two, four, three. Two, one, three, two, four, three. All right, modulate it, do it backwards. Da -da 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 -da. So even I had to concentrate on it. I haven't done that exercise in a while. But make sure you're doing that exercise. If you have that problem, if you have that seesaw type of, you know, <laughs> that kind of a problem, that flying finger type of uh, type of problem, make sure you're practicing using that, utilizing that exercise to help you with that um, that much more. So you'll be able to control your fingers just a little bit more and, and you'll have more time to get to the note if you need to. And it won't hinder you from missing that amount of space inside of that if you're playing a pretty intricate bass line. All right, so make sure you're taking that slow. I'll have it written down below for you guys or you can guys can get the PDF um, and I'll put the link that, to that down below as well. So if you guys are new here and haven't subscribed yet, I'll make it real easy for you. I'll put a link here to go ahead and click that to subscribe. Also click the notification bell to get notified of every time I post. I'll put a link here to the website, DerekBennett.com, where you can get the sheet music, the PDF. You'll have more access to me, more lessons, more everything, more forums. Just check it out. It, it's awesome. Uh, it's a three-day free trial. Uh, check it out. You won't regret it. Until next time, I'll see you.